I think the really fundamental thing that is missing from people's understanding of the nature of aging is that people think it's not really like the other ways in which we get sick. Aging is very unlike an infection. It's not something that we can cure, like a disease, you know, tuberculosis or whatever. But what people get wrong is the, but with the relation to the diseases of old age, like Alzheimer's or atherosclerosis or osteoporosis and such like. People think of them as if they really are a bit like infections that can be cured. And the result is that society pours huge amounts of money into the development and dissemination of treatments that have the goal of stopping people from getting these things. But that makes no sense because those things are actually parts of aging. They are, f f phenomenologically, they are indistinguishable from the things that most people would put under the category of aging itself. Things like loss of muscle or decline in function of the immune system. All of these things are, at the end of the day, side effects of having been alive a long time. And that means that they cannot be cured and eliminated from the body the way that an infection can. However, on the bright side, what it does mean is that all of these things, if we tackle them correctly, if we tackle them in an intelligent way, can be amenable to medical intervention. They can be eliminated by medical intervention. The work that we do is, in a way, kind of intermediate between prevention and cure. So the essence of geriatric medicine is to treat the diseases of old age as if they were infections, to attack them directly and try to eliminate them from the body and thereby stop people from suffering from them. And that has been completely unsuccessful because it intervenes too late in the chain of events. The things that cause it, the drivers of the diseases of old age, the damage that accumulates throughout life in the body as a side effect of being alive, that damage continues to accumulate for as long as people are alive. And therefore, anything that tries to address the consequences of that damage is inevitably going to become progressively less effective as time goes on. However, at the other end of the spectrum, the most preventative theoretical approach to doing anything about aging would be to somehow clean up our metabolism so that our bodies did not create so much damage in the first place and thereby to obviously postpone the age at which the damage reaches a threshold, a level that is pathogenic. And that too has been utterly unsuccessful because apart from anything else, the metabolism is just so complicated that we can't figure out what to do. Plus also, even if we could figure out what to do, it wouldn't be very useful if we only started to do it starting in middle age, for example, because most of the damage that would be needed in order to cause ill health would already have been accumulated. So our approach, which is essentially damage repair, is kind of halfway between the two. On the one hand, it is preventative in the sense that it's designed to be applied to people who are not yet sick. But on the other hand, it's also curative in the sense that it restores the body, the body's composition and structure at the molecular level and the cellular level to something like how it was at an earlier age. People have a strange kind of selective memory when it comes to the question of whether aging is a disease or whether it's a medical problem. The fact is that since the dawn of civilization, we have regarded aging as a problem. And since the dawn of science, we have regarded aging as a medical problem. It's just that as progress has failed to materialize, as we've gone on with aging, resisting our efforts to do anything about it, the result is that more and more of us have made our peace with aging, so to speak, have come to the kind of the view that aging is some kind of blessing in disguise, some kind of thing that we really shouldn't be trying to mess with and maybe it wouldn't be successful even if we did try. And the result of that is people start to believe completely idiotic things like, you know, aging is not a problem or aging is not a disease. The fact is, aging is a medical problem. It's a very, very bad, it's the number one medical problem. And we've got to wise up and remember that.